Hey, hello from foggy and uh, pretty cold in the 30s, Walla Walla, Washington. And it's been this way for just an awful long time, and uh, I'm kind of tired of it. <laughs> My dogs don't like it. I don't like it too much. But it's nice and warm in here. And uh, I'm going to do a follow-up on that truck grinding I just did and uh, give you a little more information on how to be successful in that endeavor. Let's have a look at this truck here. Now this is a truck I rebuilt a long time ago. And to get the results that I display... The truck has to be in good condition. And if you look down in here, you can see on this one, usually I use a piece of pipe. But the scroll, let me go ahead and just take those jaws back a little bit. I think you can see the scroll move as it's moving the jaws out. But once I get them out so far, they're almost out. But I rebushed the pivot. The scroll pivots on the front part of the chuck here. There's a boss, and that wears. And on this one, I happen to have a piece of bronze the right size. And I re-fit uh, the scroll and sleeved this boss with bronze and uh, usually I use a piece of pipe or uh, whatever steels available works and what I do is I do that once the clearance here the wear exceeds about three thousandths of an inch now the scroll is very hard and Generally, it doesn't wear very much, uh, but I do have a honing machine, and I can dust it out, but usually I don't have to. So, the scroll wears the pivot. Yeah, you can see here the bronze that I put in there, and I'll move that a little bit. See? Okay. So the play uh, exceeded three thousandths is probably like five or six or something. So I re-bushed this or sleeved it. And uh, I held this front part in a four-jaw chuck. This was towards the chuck here. Then I machined uh, that boss and sleeved it. Then put the sleeve on and then machined it for the, uh, I heated the sleeve up and just pushed it on, then let it cool down and machined the OD uh, to fit the ID of the scroll. Now, the other thing that happens with these things, oh, by the way, if you want to really take care of your chuck and you don't want it to wear, the first thing you do when you use it is take an oil can and just shoot some oil there. On that pivot and on the scroll a little bit, see? Get that oiled. And, okay, so here's the pinion. And on a buck chuck, there's only one. And uh, so it's the master pinion by default. But new buck chucks have three. Okay. So that beveled pinion, when you tighten it, pushes the scroll forward. And it wears uh, what we call a wear pad just on the back of this, on the inside. So it pushes the scroll into the front part and wears it, and then it causes the, the scroll to cock, combined with the wear <laughs> from the pivot. So you got wear from the pivot and wear from the pinion 
pushing the scroll in. So good chucks like this split right down the middle of the pinion. So you got to squeeze it together and machine that pad. I check it with a piece of lead solder, put it back together, and then machine it so it's got two thousandths clearance on a, on a chuck like this, not less, and two thousandths clearance for the pivot. Okay, then <laughs> you can get to this point, and this is where you want to be. Now I did the same to this chuck here. Now keep in mind this is a small chuck on a powerful lathe, so uh, you, you don't want to do heavy duty stuff with a situation like this, like part, parting off 4140 and stuff. I just do uh, very light work with it, like if it's uh, oh, uh, um, a bench lathe maybe. But it's a little better to eventually. There's my master pinion. Okay. I'm going to stick a piece of drill rod in there. 3 8 drill rod. And we'll see what the run out is on this drill rod. Now, when I put stuff in a scroll chuck because of the play of the scroll, the jaws, I twist it in the direction of the torque against it from cutting. So I roll it towards the back and then tighten it. And you can kind of feel a good spot to tighten. Let's set that there. Let's get this over there. We're going to do three pieces of metal here. Yeah, let's get that on there. I hope you're all doing well today. And don't have as much fog. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We're there. Roll it. And with a 3 8 piece of drill rod, I think you can see that. I sure hope so. Oh, too much glare. There is about one half thousandths or so play that that's good enough run out you might even get better if i dinked with it okay let's back that out and we'll go we'll go a size bigger yeah this uh this is the bar that i initially uh tested this thing with okay i'm going to do the same thing let me move that out of the way I'm going to ro rotate this. Bring it till it's just slightly tight. You want to be consistent in tightening things in a chuck. So I'm rolling it. I'm just starting to tighten it and, and then feel a good spot. Then there. Right there. Tighten it to the point that that can be machined. Okay. <laughs> this thing's funny. Oh, there we go. These, uh, Nogas are generally pretty good. I gotta give myself a little more room somehow here. I don't know what that's hanging up on. There we go. Okay, got her on the tin there. Let's see how you're doing. Hopefully that's okay. Where are we? It looks like less than two tenths of a thousandth. Okay. And I've been making a few parts with this chuck. Okay, let's go to another size. Next size. <laughs> All right. Can't see very well here, but uh, there's my master pinion. That was the pinion where I, where I got to uh, grind the jaws the least. 
Now this is a piece of really hard sh uh, ground shaft. You can see the depth of the hardness on it. It's just an incredible piece of metal. That was cut off something. I don't know. I salvaged this. But it's really round. Okay, same thing. Rotate it, you know, bring the jaws just so they're in contact and then rotate it a little bit. Tighten it. And let's see where we're at. That's probably an inch and a quarter or something there. Material. Right on zero on that thing. And... Better than one half thousandths. Now those are pretty darn good results. And I would doubt that a brand new chuck would do that. You have to uh, fit brand new chucks to get uh, the results I'm getting out of a 50 year old chuck out of a 82-year-old lathe. That's pretty cool, I think. Bye-bye.